is promise theory and how does it work? So this morning there was a really interesting comment about healthcare.gov during one of the keynotes that the contractors went about it thinking it was just another IT project and it didn't really matter if it failed because most government IT projects fail and nobody knows and nobody cares. But this one was different because everyone in the country cared. And I think this is an example of a trend that we're seeing, which is that IT isn't really a private backroom matter anymore. There's this seamless interconnection between the back office and the, and the customer experience. So what we're seeing is that IT systems are becoming much more complex and more interconnected. Um, and complex systems are much harder and different to manage uh, because failure is unavoidable and inherent in them. And in fact, when you try and over control them, you make it worse. If you think of a forest where you try and clean it out so there are never any fires, when there is a fire, the whole forest burns down. Whereas if you leave some brush in, the forest will kind of rejuvenate itself. And we need to start taking that kind of approach to IT systems. And really what promise theory is, is it's a deceptively simple way of thinking about complex systems and the relationship between failure and success and uncertainty and certainty. So if you look at a variety of things, everything from a computer system to a data center to an IT organization and to an entire company, you can look at it in terms of components that collaborate with each other by making promises. So what is a promise? Um, it's basically the idea that I have an intention to provide you some value. And I, and I really intend to do it and I'm going to work very hard to do it. So if you think about an operating system that has an interface to the file system that lets you write things to the file, it makes a promise, which is if you write something to this file and you come back an hour later and you ask me what's in the file, I'm going to give you back the answer that you expected. And I'm going to work very, very hard to keep my promise. And most of the time, I will. But guess what? Every once in a while, I'm going to break my promise. And the interesting thing is what promise theory lets us do is make this idea of intention and uncertainty explicit. And when it is explicit, what happens is that the responsibility is on us to evaluate how trustworthy the system we're working with is and make contingency plans. So for example, when people say you should always back up your data, basically what they're saying is that this well-engineered computer might break its promise. And, and if you lose all your data because you didn't back up, you kind of can't complain because you didn't deal with the reality. Um, so when we look at things like um, you know, DevOps and, and cloud and new IT kinds of approaches, we can, we can actually see this at work in a, in a lot of familiar areas. And the interesting thing is that when we deal with uncertainty and make it explicit, we ironically can build systems that are more certain and more reliable. So if you think about something like an auto-scaling load balancer, a website makes a promise, which is no matter how many users there are, I will give you back a web page in so many milliseconds. And it's happily plunking along, and all of a sudden the load balancer says, uh-oh, the servers I have aren't going to be able to keep this promise in a minute, so I better spin up some more. Um, or if you look at uh, even something like continuous integration, uh, developers make a promise to each other, which is, I won't check in code that breaks the build. But guess what? They break that promise all the time. And so the reason you have a Jenkins server and the reason you run unit tests is so that you can catch that broken promise and repair it. The other dynamic is that when you treat the pieces of a complex system as autonomous and think about them as voluntarily making promises instead of just doing what they're told, you can build systems that are much more scalable and much more resilient. That's really where people are trying to go with microservices, particularly when you look at it as an organizational pattern and not just an architectural pattern. Um, when we talk about Agile and we talk about scaling Agile, it's funny because we kind of forget everything we learn. Agile is this nice sloppy process that lets us deal with change and uncertainty. And then when we scale it, we think we have to lock everything down. Well, we have these features that cross teams, and we have these release trains, and if everything doesn't get out on time, things will be bad. So we kind of try and construct this hardwired Rube Goldberg device. It's funny for me personally because 
I, I grew up, my father's an architect, and I grew up listening to him talk around the dinner table about managing construction projects. And guess what? They're all about managing uncertainty, right? Painter falls off a ladder, breaks his leg, can't paint for two weeks. What do you do? Um, you know, there's a dock strike in Brazil, and the tea delivery is delayed, or the price of tea goes up. What do you do? And it's all about figuring that out, and it's all based on the idea that you're making promises and you're receiving promises, and you have to deal with the reality that they're not always going to be met, and that you can still build a good building on time, under budget, if you acknowledge the fact that there's uncertainty and there's failure. So, how did you come across the theory, and why did it resonate with you? You mentioned growing up with your dad as an architect, but what, what else? What else really struck you? Well, I was introduced to it by Mark Burgess, who's the person who conceived it. He's also the guy who invented CF Engine. And he's been thinking about system administration theory for 20 years now, and he's really way ahead of the rest of us. And he showed me this lovely article that he wrote about promise theory called Promise You a Rose Garden. And to be honest, I read it, and I thought this is really nice, and it's really poetic, and I have no idea what the guy's talking about. I don't understand promise theory any better than I did 20 minutes ago. And when he walked me through it a few more times, I realized that I didn't get it because it was right in front of me. And it was right in the word promise. Um, and the power of that word is it means the same thing in ordinary usage as it does in technical usage. And everybody intuitively understands it. And there's something, something nice and accessible about that. I was working with a client who's trying to build a new data center and they're trying to figure out how they're going to support failover and there's some controversy about um, what the, the board of directors expectations are. And one of the technical architects said, well, what are we promising anyway? And that was exactly the right question. And he didn't know anything about promise theory, but he understood promises. The other thing that I really like about it personally is that it it helps you think in terms of systems, and it actually helps you think beyond DevOps and even beyond IT. Because ultimately, when you're delivering software as service, you're making a promise to help your customer get something done. And there are a lot of things that have to happen. It isn't just the software has to be good. It isn't just that the servers or the data center has to be good. It also means that the documentation has to be good, and the customer support has to be good, and the customer education process has to be good. So there's this whole complex socio-technical system that all has to come together. And you can use promise theory to think about all of that. What promises does development make to technical support? What promises does marketing make to development? And so on and so forth. So there is a lot of opportunity for promise theory in DevOps. I would say so. And on one level, you can say that DevOps is a reimagining of the promises that development and operations make to each other. The idea that Dev and Ops are each other's customer and that development has to make certain promises to operations and vice versa is a very new way of thinking about it as opposed to the model where you know, product management tells development what to do and development tells operations what to do and operations tells support what to do. I think it can also help us do DevOps better, if you will, because you know, DevOps is arising in part because we're engineering much more complex systems. And so we need to think about how to manage failure. You know, if you even think about the idea of optimizing mean time to repair over mean time between failures, you're saying that we have an environment where pieces are going to break promises all the time, so we need to have the mindset of what do we do when those promises get broken. So what's the thinking behind using the word promise, since promises are very often broken? Well, that's the whole point. Um, you know, Jim Stogdell gave this great talk this afternoon about complexity and complex systems. Um, and that we're moving from an industrial model of business and technology to a post-industrial model. And the industrial model says, well, that if you can design everything properly and if you can engineer everything properly, you can engineer uncertainty and change and failure out of the system. Um, the post-industrial model says, well, failure is all over the place and it's actually how we improve and how we learn. 
So we need something that, that allows us to think and talk and engineer in terms of things get broken all the time. So your statement, well, promises get broken all the time, that's not a flaw, that's a feature, right? That's a reality, so let's embrace it and let's talk about it. And so, do you see any synergies between promise theory and the blameless postmortems that John Alspaugh talks about? I do. I see lots of them. Um, and in a sense, I could just repeat what I just said. You know, what, what John is focused on is the idea that quote unquote mistakes and failures are inherent in, in the complex systems that we're building. And the idea behind a blameful postmortem is it shouldn't have happened. So let's find what or who was at fault and engineer them out, whether it be engineering a, a, a piece of the system out or engineering an engineer out and firing them. And the notion is that after the postmortem, um, the ideally failures, we won't have any more postmortems. We shouldn't have had one in the first place. And I think John's approach is no. Postmortems are part of steady state. They're part of our whole operational culture. And we use them as a, as a learning mechanism. And why do we learn, use them as a learning mechanism? Because everybody in our, in our operations team and our development team are all making promises to each other, right? Nobody comes to work and tries to do a bad job. Everybody makes a, a voluntary commitment. I'm gonna do the best I can, and I'm gonna try and succeed, and I'm gonna try and help the company succeed. And guess what? We don't, we aren't always able to keep our promises, and some of it has nothing to do with us personally. It has to do with a piece of the system that we can't control and we can't foresee. So when we embrace that, we can get beyond the idea of blaming and into the idea of learning. Exactly. So shifting gears just a little bit, what are the things you're finding interesting these days? What people or projects are you really keeping an eye on? Well, to some degree, because I, I have the great honor of um, being in the middle of writing a book for O'Reilly, that's like what I think about all the time. Um, but what I'm trying to do with the book is, is really bring together some ideas that are exciting to me. Um, and it, it comes down to thinking beyond DevOps and thinking about how IT gets more and more closely integrated with the entire business and what it means to think about service and what happens when we start to unify engineering and design perspectives on things? You know, part of what complexity tells us is you can't analytically engineer correctness. You kind of have to continually design your way towards solutions. And so I'm really excited about exploring ideas like promise theory and DevOps and cybernetics. And how do we unify those with things like lean UX and service design in order to kind of expand our perspective? You know, John, when he talks about blameless postmortems, will say things like, well, we can't rely on objective reality anymore. That's a pretty wild thing to say. And, you know, it's a pretty postmodern, post-industrial thing to say. And, you know, when you look at his work and you look at, at people he's studied, like Sidney Decker, and they talk about, you know, postmodern philosophy, we're having to start to absorb that in IT in order to be able to, to build things like healthcare.gov and make it work. Um, so that real sort of profound crossing of disciplines, I think that's the thing that excites me the most these days and, and, and what I try and explore. That's interesting. Thank you very much for chatting with me today. You bet. My pleasure. Thank you for having me.